I feel like it's my first day back at school. <laughs> All right, let's get into this. What's going on everyone? Seth Miranda here. This is Adorama Rewind. Yep, back on the channel. And if you're new here, don't know what this is. It's basically a little digest of everything that happened in the week for the photo industry, video industry, uh, some music, gaming, other things, because pretty much Adorama does everything now with the Create No Matter What initiative. I'm gonna go through all that kind of stuff that's going on uh, later. I'll show you guys some platforms, some things you might not be aware of, but pretty much this is your spot for the community of Adorama. This is where you get to join the comments, share point of view, insights. We don't bash each other, no tribalism. We just kind of go through what's going on, how we feel about it, how it affects us, because we're all different. We're all different creators. We all have different needs, different workflows, uh, resources, all sorts of things. So this is kind of your community spot. My name is Seth Miranda, last ex-witness on virtually all social. So you can yell me on Twitter, join me on Twitch, check out my work on Instagram. But for right now, let's get right into this. It wasn't a crazy news week, but the Olympics are going on. And we do have a bunch of flagship prototypes out there in the wild being tested during the Olympics. It's a weird year because they shifted it one year and we kind of are in some weird cycle when it comes to what brands are putting out there. Usually at the Olympics, being there every four years or so, not or so, every four years, I guess they're or so now. Every four years, uh, they are doing this as a testing ground rather than a premiere of the body. That is the train, by the way, this is being recorded in Brooklyn for real. So this is my home Twitch setup. Forgive me if you're not used to this. If you are, you know that sound. Anyway, let's go jump in and see what's going on at the Olympics really quick because Nikon and Canon both had some like war rooms going on over there. Check this out. This is Nikon's uh, crazy gear vault where if you have a media pass, and you are a Nikon Pro Services or something like that, you can actually go and just borrow these massive lenses or whatever bodies you want. D6s, and they did have a bunch of Z series out there as well, but you know, I think you're probably gonna lean into the D6 if you are shooting at the Olympics, uh, which is a DSLR. However, Canon, boom, look at this massive glass, all sorts of uh, technicians working on people's gear, keeping it calibrated and nice and tight. This is kind of what's cool about the Olympics. It's kind of like, what better place to showcase your gear or what better place to see what can happen with it than a world stage with fast action, with amazing talent, and also the best photographers in the world all congregating right there on the grounds of the Olympics. Of course, the images themselves are some of the most circulated images in sports. They kind of transcend outside of just the sports world into mainstream culture. We see everybody checking out the Olympics, even if you're not into sports. I'm not a sports guy, but you know, I will definitely check in. Although this year they did put BMX freestyle into the Olympics, which is a big thing for me. I can't believe how far the sport has come. And congratulations to you skateboarders as well. Uh, we're gonna actually, let's just jump right into that. Atiba Jefferson, okay? One of the most legendary skate photographers in the game, especially for my generation. I actually bought his uh, signature backpack when I was a kid. It, it was too small to fit all the gear I was lugging around, but back then I took everything in the planet I could uh, to go shoot with. Anyway, my man was at the Olympics trying out the R3, shooting at around 30 frames per second and posting it on his Instagram, showing some real life application of this future. I I'm not gonna say it's a flagship camera because I still think that there is something else coming down the line, mainly because this won't be a super high res camera, but 24 megapixels is plenty. And to be able to shoot this fast, is pretty much like a sports shooter's dream, right? Especially for you Canon mirrorless people that have been wanting a pro level camera. It's coming, man, I think. And we thought it was going to be like a 45 megapixel camera. We thought it was gonna be how Sony has the Alpha One. We thought how Nikon is putting out the Z9 that's probably around 46 megapixel. But I always said it was gonna be around 24 to 30 megapixel. And it seems that the EXIF data from the sensor has been, or the files rather have been uploaded, have been saying 24 megapixels. This is their sports camera. This is their uh, realm of uh, above the A92 kind of, because it's a little faster frames per second. The A92, of course, is a little older. This isn't even out yet. These are all prototypes, but uh, it was uploaded to uh, the internet, obviously, by Jeff Cable, who has the R3 at the Olympics. You can check out his website. But there's a plugin to Chrome called XF Viewer Pro, and it turns out that the, uh, the, the XF data basically, I'm not even sure if I say XF anymore. I, I don't know if I say that correctly ever, but EXIF data is basically saying it's a 24 megapixel sensor. No shock to me there. Uh, we see a lot of 
high-end, top-end flagship cameras being 16 to 24 megapixels all the time. The 1DX Mark III, which is a $6,500 DSLR that came out about a year ago, is a 20 megapixel sensor, which is the same sensor, I, I think, that's in the Canon R6. A lot of people get stuck on numbers like resolution, but they don't realize that things like performance or storage or the fact that when you're shooting something like sports or news, you don't want to have these huge files that you need to get over to wire, especially if they're just going to end up on social, on just websites that are going to downsample them, all sorts of things like that, or events, or you probably need something a little lower res than the Monsters 50 megapixel uh, sensors that are out there and stuff like that because you don't know what you're shooting. If you are a news press uh, events type photographer, you might be in the lowest light ever and you wanna have that noise fidelity, right? You wanna be able to shoot at higher ISOs. There is a lot of sports photographers that shoot at 10,000 ISO all the time, like it's nothing, you know? But for someone in a studio, you kind of are sticking around 100 ISO or stuff like that. That being said, that's kind of where I think their ethos for this camera went. There are a lot of cool ideas happening in this camera from the uh, new shoe that they're implementing, this design of it. I gotta say, it is a pretty sexy looking camera with this like, I'm calling it like a snakeskin style grip. It, it really does look pretty nice, really nice and slick. I think it's gonna be a great release for Canon. The question now is what will the price point be? I, I, I don't know, I don't know. But I, I do see another camera coming down the line. A lot of people are speculating there's an R1 out there. I don't like to talk too much about rumors because they can get kind of poisonous to the industry, setting expectations that just aren't real and making all sorts of misinformation out there. But I do think that they will be looking at higher res uh, options, not just the R5. I do think that they will probably be making a play for global shutter. For those of you who don't know, global shutter means that we get rid of the rolling electronic shutter that can give us some distortion problems and other things like that, uh, or jello while panning for video and all, all sorts of stuff. Uh, keep in mind, the Komodo Dragon from RED has a Canon sensor in it. It is APS-C, but it does have a global shutter in it. So there's something happening there. I wouldn't be surprised if Canon comes out with that uh, somewhere down the line. That being said, there is also a crazy prototype happening with the Z9 that was spotted at the Olympics. Uh, you kind of have to catch this on Twitter. Uh, this is pretty much if you married a Z7 and a D6 together, you would get this kind of look. The back LCD has been gaff taped, which makes us think there's something going on there, right? We don't know what it exactly is. Uh, it's, it's really interesting because this could be a couple things, okay? I, and I'm gonna jump in here real quick because a lot of people were speculating all sorts of stuff. Uh, if the back panel is taped down from a camera, a lot of pros, especially old school pros, tape it down to keep it flush so that while it's swinging on their belt, it's not getting caught on some little latch that flips the screen out, has it come out when they don't want it to, or could even worse break it or other things that can happen. So they tape it down all the time. It could also be that this is a prototype and they're covering it up kind of like how they do with like special cars out there. They, they tape like blocky foam to it so people can't see the body lines of the car while it's out there being tested. This is all up in the air, who knows? It does look like a really big screen. However, I think a lot of that is bezel. It, it could be bezel, I don't know. I don't know anything. I have no special uh, information. I will say that I hope it has some good resolution to it. Canon and I kind of both been putting out really good screens on their mirrorless cameras, which is important, especially if you are someone that isn't out there able to tether, right? Uh, if you're shooting sports and fast action, you're creeping up that ISO, you're going to see how that noise is coming into play with your images in the situation you're shooting in. So you're going to want that resolution. Uh, this is all sorts of speculation that this could even be a screen that does different articulations, right? I said forever, if they could just make a screen that not only pivots off the back, but is in a cradle, that off the cradle has a hinge to flip it out going forward. So you get that tilt, you get that flip, which I'm sure is an engineering feat in itself. I'm sure there's plenty of problems with like wires and connections and stuff, but it would end the whole, do you want a flip screen or do you want a tilt screen? And I like my flip screen because I do video. I like tilt screen because I'm a photographer. We can end this whole stupid argument, angry people and con I just mm, hate it all. Anyway, I don't know. That would be cool if that's the case. I personally think this was just a pro taping down the LCD so it doesn't flip out when he doesn't want to, or they want to rather. Uh, yeah, so let me know down below what you think about that. The Z9's looking pretty much like what we thought it was gonna look like, a flagship uh, Nikon camera that happens to be mirrorless. The R3 has some things that seem pretty innovative in it, like the shoe and other stuff like that. But 
we don't know what's in these cameras. Everything is just like leaked specs and rumors are rumors and usually aren't true, but you know, take everything with a grain of salt. Let's keep moving forward. Uh, Canon did file a patent for something that I think is super, super interesting and is a, is a lot more important than you think it is. They filed a patent for a shutter-like, shutter-like, not shutter, like barrier mechanism for protecting mirrorless image sensors. Why is this so important? Okay, let's break this down and listen to me clearly. Right now we have some cameras, namely Canon being one of them, that while you take the lens off, when you take the lens off the body, the shutter comes down to protect the sensor. The problem with that is your shutter is thin, highly calibrated blades of metal that shoot and move at 8 thousandth of a second at 20 frames per, or whatever, 10 frames per second on average. If some kind of hard dust gets in there, if something dents those blades, it can cause some catastrophic failure going on there. Uh, forging and fire type terminology there. What we want is a mechanism that can cover the sensor that doesn't have importance on it like the level of a shutter. Something that actually is meant for protection, not something that just happens to cover the sensor that is also a highly calibrated piece of the equipment that we definitely need. Now, me and Daniel, I think like four years ago, Dan, we talked to Hasselblad about this. We were like, hey, how come you guys can't make something that covers that medium format sensor? And they were like, well, it actually makes the camera larger than we want it to. It puts in more complications of more moving parts than we want to have in there. Costs all sorts of things. That being said, if you are moving towards a global shutter and electronic shutter starts taking over and leaving mechanical shutter uh, the thing of the past, which we aren't there yet. I know some of you with the Alpha 1 think we are. We aren't there yet, I'll talk about that in a second. Once that's gone and you don't have to have a mechanical shutter in there, you actually have the room basically coincidentally to put in a shutter-like mechanism that could protect the sensor, which is awesome. However, remember, if you're doing something like shooting in the wild and it's a sandy environment and sand gets on the protector, uh, guess what? As soon as you close that lens up, it's going to open up in the, the sand or dust or whatever gets in there anyway. So keep that in mind. You're probably still going to need your little rockets. <sighs> smells like tire air. Do you remember, anybody remember the adventures of Pete and Pete with Arnie who would like the smell of tire air? I don't, I don't know. Let me know down below if you remember that show. Anyway, uh, this is kind of a cool thing. If they are getting ready to put this out there, this... They could not only be the first, but they could set the standard for a mechanism for when we don't have mechanical shutters to protect our sensors from when we uh, change our lenses out. This is, this is a really big thing. I really hope this comes to fruition. The reason I say we're not out of the woods yet on having mechanical shutters is because there's still issues with electronic shutter. If there's things that mechanical shutter gives us that electronic shutter doesn't, then we still need mechanical shutters. Case in point, the Alpha 1, right? People were like really questioning whether we need a mechanical shutter due to that camera. Well, a guy like me who wants to put in a strobe in the shoe or go into using a trigger with a strobe, you have to shoot at 200th of a second electronic shutter at the most for flash sync if you wanted the full speed out of that camera. Remember, they say 30 frames per second electronic. If you want to have a strobe attached to that and go, and go with the full speed of this camera, you're still at the mercy of 200th of a second for the electronic shutter to fire the strobe, which is great that the electronic shutter can finally fire a strobe, which pretty much will be standard going forward. Because you have to go to mechanical shutter to then get their awesome new flash sync of 400th of a second, 500th of a second, and other things like that, you're at the mercy of 10 frames per second with mechanical. 10 frames per second mechanical, 30 frames per second electronic. However, the maximum shutter speed I can get to isn't the same. Therefore, I'm more likely to lean on the mechanical shutter for the faster flash sync. It sounds crazy, it sounds very niche and picking it apart, but if you're someone that uses strobe a lot, you know exactly what I'm talking about. And even though we've been at the mercy of having 200th of a second, 250th of a second shutter speeds uh, for our flash sync, even though we have uh, high speed sync and things like that out there, it, there's still a difference between mechanical and electronic. And also, even if there is anti-distortion happening in electronic shutters, there's still a chance of distortion. It's still a thing. It's not a global shutter. And we're talking about 
things coming into play in the image where it might actually like muddy it up a little bit to compensate for the motion that's distorting the image when you're shooting electronic shutter. Those of you who shoot sports know what I'm talking about. However, it has gotten incredibly better. The Alpha One is incredible when it comes to the rolling shutter and things like that. I'm not taking anything away from that, but there still is a difference between mechanical and electronic. And that's why I think something like this is a big deal when we one day may not have the mechanical shutter uh, we're going to need something to protect that sensor should we want it. I, I'm pretty sure this will be something in mid-range to higher-end cameras. They'll probably be able to cut costs on lower-end cameras by not having this in there if we go forward. I mean, I'm thinking forever in the future because global shutter, they hit the lower end of the camera market. I don't know. That's going to be forever because I'm pretty sure not having global shutter will make those cameras more affordable. Whoa, is that a rant? I apologize if you're new to this. I'm sorry, I tend to go down rabbit holes, but I think it's important that people hear discussions rather than just read forums of blind uh, avatars that don't maybe know what they're saying or something like that. And I could be wrong as well. Write me in the comments. I'm sure you'll let me know anyway. I feel those teeth sharpening, but Global Shutter's awesome. I hope we get there. I don't know if we will uh, this year or next, but I think that's what Canon is gearing up for in my opinion. Okay. Uh, let's talk about some stuff that's happening at home base with Adorama. So all you people out there shooting and posting and doing all that stuff, we want to see it and we want you to be part of the Adorama community. So all you need to do for us to start finding your work is to use the hashtag create no matter what. Create no matter what is kind of like a battle cry. It's definitely a call to action, but there also are these, uh, I don't want to call them competitions. They're kind of like, create. Ah, there we go, creative challenges. Yes, nice PR Adorama. Uh, pretty much, you just got to get into whatever the challenge is. This one is wildlife right now. You could win over $3,000 in Sony gear, which is awesome. The deadline for submission is August 5th. Uh, get in there. Go do it. And they will announce the winner on August 9th. So go ahead, check out this page. Uh, the link is down below. And don't forget to hashtag everything you're doing, create no matter what. Uh, our social team is totally keeping an eye on it. We want to see what you guys are doing out there. And it also is like kind of like a signal to other people that are in this Adorama universe and we can stay in touch until like that. We also have things like a Discord uh, that you can get to. Speaking of which, let's talk about the Twitch channel. Yeah, so I launched the Twitch channel for Adorama two years ago and it was kind of gaming based, but now it's everything based. I mean, on Mondays, you have Emily Seltis doing illustration. Tuesdays, I shoot live at 11 in the morning Eastern time, and we do lighting on the fly like with no plan. I just light and we go and we roll with it and we create something together. Later that night on Tuesdays, you have Ab Cisse, a legend in the photo industry, and you guys should all know him, and he's an amazing personality as well. Incredible wealth of knowledge and experience. He shows you guys photo editing with Capture One, Lightroom, Photoshop, Tuesday nights. Wednesdays, we have Raquel Lilly doing music production. She's an amazing vocalist, a beautiful guitar player, and she shows some post-production mixing, stuff like that. In fact, let's go over to the channel so you guys see what I'm talking about. So Raquel Lilly over here on the right, you can see uh, that's Wednesdays. Thursdays and Fridays, you can hang out with Data Dave as he tries to conquer new challenges in gaming. So we still are doing stuff for gaming, and uh, we do have fighting game tournaments for charity. So we raised some great money for things like children in the ICU and stuff like that. This is Ab Cisse showing you guys some retouching over here on the right. Also, we have Daniel Norton, our very own Daniel Norton doing Dungeons and Dragons. Yeah, my man is doing D&D on the channel the first Sunday of every month, which guess what is this Sunday. It's, it's right now. You guys are watching this video on a Sunday. It's happening right now, 7 p.m. Eastern time. If you missed it, it's still up there chilling. If you don't know what Twitch is, it's a really great live platform. It's of the moment, and you are talking right to our creators, right to hosts like me, live. You have questions, you have things you wanna know, you have things you wanna say, you have discussions you wanna bring up. Twitch is the place to do it, absolutely. So go to twitch.tv slash Adorama XP. I, I went with that name for experience points. I thought it was pretty cool, because we have Adorama TV, Adorama XP. I'm not gonna go down there. All right, but pretty much you're missing out if you don't join the Twitch channel. And on the Twitch channel itself is the link to the Discord server, which is awesome in its own right. The Discord server is full of chat rooms for everyone, and it's a very supportive, helpful community of people that don't really care about what you shoot, they just wanna help you shoot. And on top of that, there's industry news. We talk about things that's going on. Let me go over to the Discord. I'll show you what I'm talking about. So if you're familiar with Discord, 
this is ours. I mean, everything over here, you have all the hosts have their own room where you can share work with them, ask them questions. Uh, everything in the gaming industry, you wanna talk about PC builds, boom, we got a room for it. You're a Canon shooter, boom, there's a room for a Canon and you guys can share the images you guys are shooting. Pentax, I gave you guys a home, come on. I got nothing but love for you guys. So come hang out, uh, lighting and grip, all sorts of stuff like that. And even the music channels are here so you guys can share uh, things that, what are you playing, what kind of music you're into, what type of software you guys use. Even at Film and Dark Room, which Ryan Buck is like the mayor of that room, by the way. What's going on, Ryan Buck? I hope, you got, I hope you're well over there. And you guys have access, this is like, first-hand access to the community and to us. So get into the Discord and start talking about some things. It's, it's awesome. I gotta say, Discord is just great. You can share everything you can think of in there, have private conversations and meet people that are on your wavelength and be very supportive. It's kind of like live troubleshooting almost. You know, you don't have to worry about going into a forum and being hesitant and thinking your questions are stupid. No one there thinks that, and I moderate that thing. Don't worry about it, I got your back, I got your back. All right, let's jump into a little bit of a rabbit hole. Adorama also has Adorama Music now. Yeah, so let's go take a look. Adorama Music is a channel that's still in its infancy. We're only talking about less than 4,000 subscribers compared to the over 1 million on Adorama TV. This is an awesome resource for anyone that is into music. You have tutorials from Raquel Lilly talking about how to mix your own music together right there at home. You have amazing music videos shot by our own Sal Dalia and the rest of the crew. Shout out to all those guys that are working on there. Erwin Rommel, everybody that's been working on this channel. Christina Santelises, who's been curating all this and putting it together. Uh, this is awesome. So you get to actually see some bands and, and artists that you don't know about that also get a music video produced by us to help them out there and get you guys informed on their music and also that we go into how we shot these videos. So it's not just the music, it's also the cinema end of it, filmmaking, and there's also the philosophy of all this stuff. So keep watching on that. There also, just so you know, I keep saying also, but pretty much uh, there's just so much going on. Also, 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 there's so much going on in the Adorama universe. It's not just Adorama TV. It's not just this YouTube channel. There's challenges where you guys can just win stuff for just shooting what you already shoot. All you have to do is use hashtags. There's so many things going on, live events. Go to 42Live to check out the events from the vendors that keep you informed on things like light panels and all sorts of other uh, gear out there. Don't forget to check out 42Live right here. There's always something going on. You can sign up for the events and you can jump in the chat room. You can ask these vendors right on the spot issues you're having, things you're wondering about, stuff that's coming out, new product, what you're curious about. This is your portal to talk right to the brands is 42 Live. I will throw the link right down in the description like the rest of this stuff. Uh, I know I'm running long on this one, I'm sorry, but you know, I'm a rambler, so it is what it is. All right, aside from Adorama Music, Adorama TV, I don't know if you guys realize this, but the rest of this channel has a bunch of crazy stuff going on constantly. There is something every day pretty much being uploaded to the channel, whether it's something new like the Sony ZV E10, which is their new vlogging camera. We give you guys an actual uh, real life use case of it, or David Bergman and everybody else that's on the channel, Mark Wallace, Daniel Norton. I mean, Dan Norton doing things where he's talking about Seamless paper. I don't know what it is with you guys, but lately I've been getting nonstop questions every time I go live about what seamless paper to get. He walks you through step by step of why he's using what, how he lights it, what's different. You know, we always use gray paper and, and white walls and stuff, but he's going to talk, talk to you about color, what you can actually do with it, why use it, uh, better applications of it, you know, things like that. So check that out. Also, we have uh, him going live every other Thursday almost, or sort of, kind of in a way. So whenever you guys are around on a Thursday, 5 p.m. Eastern, check out Arama out. I guarantee you there's either Dan going live or Dan just went live. Uh, I'm there usually and we do things on the fly. So the chat room's cooking. You guys can just be like, hey, what about this? What happens when you do that? And we genuinely placate to it. We, Go for it and try to get you guys on point with whatever we're doing. See the differences in the lighting, make things happen on the fly. So don't sleep on that. Join those live chat rooms. They're the best. I mean, what's better than the content right there in front of your face and Dan Norton right there. I'm sorry, Daniel. He wants to be called Daniel. Daniel Norton right there live. with a. You want to ask him a question? He can't escape. He's in that room. Trust me. I locked the door. David Bergman. 
conquering the things that a lot of people don't talk about. You know, this one has to be sRGB versus Adobe RGB. You know, it's, it's a lot of fun to shoot live demos and do all the cool stuff where it's very dynamic. But I gotta give credit to David Bergman. He takes on things like backing up your work, uh, types of formatting, things that are just these weird little pockets or gaps of things that happen while shooting or after you're shooting or choices that you make before you even take the shot or choices you make after you have the files and things like that. So I think it's really important uh, what he's doing and I think you guys should check it out. Also, you can go to askdavidbergman.com and submit a question and he might select it and do a whole video on it. So each one of these videos is based on actual uh, audience member, community member uh, questions at askdavidbergman.com. So don't forget to check that out. We also have Lindsay Adler. You guys know who that is. Uh, very accomplished photographer and uh, a host here on Adorama and educator for a long time. And look, she does all these snazzy videos. She's got a great production team working for her. Uh, this one is how to shoot and edit cinemagraph. So if there's these things that are very current of the moment, things you want to always know about, she's got you covered. I mean, she even did a whole short series on NFTs if you wanted to take away the veil on what that was all about. She went right into it as day one. So. Don't forget to check out her whole thing. She does a lot of great fashion and beauty stuff, uh, some technical things like that, you know, all sorts of stuff. Uh, this is the one and only Gavin Hoey. You guys, if you are watching this channel, you know this guy. This is the quintessential home photographer. This is the guy who makes big things happen in small spaces. This is a guy who does everything on imagination, I swear. He just takes the imagination and marries it with the technical and figures out ways to get crazy things done and on a budget most of the time. He's just great, great personality, an incredible educator, a fantastic photographer, an incredible visionary. Just do yourself a favor and check out his playlist if you haven't. It's Take and Make Great Photography with Gavin Hoey. Easily one of the best hosts ever on YouTube, without a doubt. And that's a, a quick recap. There's so much more. There's plenty of extra hosts out, out, out on there. Pi Jerza does an incredible series. He shows you so much great techno stuff and he has this velvety deep voice that you guys would absolutely love. I, I fall asleep to it all the time. Like, oh, Pi. And then I subconsciously remember everything he told me because uh, I was sleeping while his video was going on from his amazing voice. No, I'm just kidding, Pi. Incredible educator, great photographer, an awesome insights and just an absolute asset to have at your fingertips right here in Adorama. So Pi Jerza as well. Okay, I'm gonna go really quickly into uh, shout out of the week. I did this all the time when we had uh, Adorama Rewind on the channel. It was, it's been about a year. I'm gonna give a shout out to someone who's been super, super supportive in the community of not just Adorama, but the people within the community, always answering questions, always trying to keep people informed and also just keeping the chat rooms really active and the comment sections very supportive. This goes out to you, Brad. Uh, in YYC. I know that everybody thinks it says Brad in NYC whenever you're in the chats, but this guy's been working really hard. I've watched his work evolve. He watches the videos, he asks the questions, and he applies what he learns from all the stuff that's going on. So I gotta give it to him. Uh, check out his work. I'll put his Instagram down below. And uh, that's pretty much this week's shout out of the week. Uh, and if you see him in the chat rooms, he's always in the Twitch chat, always in the Adorama live chats. Uh, say what's up to him, he's a, he's a good guy. He's also in the Discord. You can say what's up and check out some of his work and maybe get some conversations started. Community is key. Now, if you guys wanna get a shout out of the week, do me a favor, just hit me down below with your social. Stay away from your private links, stay away from private uh, websites. I'm, we had a bunch of issues over the years with that and some weird suspicious things. Just give your social, okay? And I'm sure they'll find your website from there. So let us know what you shoot as far as subject matter, what you're into, how long you've been doing it. Give us something about you and just give me uh, the social. So Instagram is out probably the best, Twitter if you want, something like that. All right. Also, what I'm going to bring back is question of the week. With the prototypes now out there for the flagships, with the pressing forward of, of the technology, we're seeing things changing fast, right? Uh, with the R5 bring us 8K, the Alpha 1 raising the flash sync speed and all sorts of things, 30 frames per second of high res images and all sorts of stuff like that. What are some things that we still don't have? What is the feature you think we should have or that you're waiting for or something that's been making you hold out on upgrading or even getting into some sort of other area like if you're a stills photographer, there's something waiting for in video features or something like that. Let me know down below, what's the feature in the gear that we still you feel we still don't have? I know a lot of you are gonna say global shutter. Uh, I, I can't help but agree with you there, but there's plenty of other things and I don't wanna spoil it, but 
you let me know down below what you think uh, you're looking for out there. Uh, okay. Wow. Uh, I think I got through this without, with minimal rants. Uh, I usually go on crazy tangents, rabbit holes everywhere. I just keep jumping down them. I apologize. But hey, rewind is back. Don't get used to this. I, this is kind of a joke. I just thought it was kind of funny to do this, but whatever. Uh, back to the white t-shirt. It's probably next week. Watch. Although uh, we'll see. If you are subscribed to Adorama TV and you're not seeing the videos come up, don't forget, if the more you engage with the videos, the more YouTube will serve them up to you. So if, don't forget to hit like on them, write a comment, just say, this is awesome. Even like a letter in, you could put a period in a comment, that's engagement. It helps out the video and it also gets you guys uh, in the algorithm of YouTube going, oh, they like this video? Keep giving them more of this. And that's kind of how you stay in the loop with Adorama. It's really easy to get lost in all of this, uh, especially with the algorithm constantly changing. So engage with the videos and also hit the bell to get notified when the videos get posted. I see comments all the time where you're, you're like, I didn't even know this came out, what is this? Also next week, I think we're gonna bring into a new little thing where I show you guys retro videos on Adorama. If you're interested in that, I will pull up a retro video, meaning the channel is 10 years old, 10 years old. There's some old videos that a lot of you probably missed, like Daniel Norton shooting Elvis. Yep, it's a real thing. Maybe we'll pull it up next week. Let me know if that's something you're interested in. I don't wanna make these too long, otherwise you guys don't click on them. Okay, this already is crazy, crazy long. My name's Seth Miranda, last X witness on all social. Hit me up on Instagram, write me on Twitter, yell at me there, or yell at me down in the comments. It's totally cool, but let's stay constructive. And don't forget, you guys can reply to each other, not just yell into a void. So have a discussion, have a constructive conversation, and don't bash each other, don't brand bash. Let's keep all that toxic stuff away. We don't need any more of it. We've been through enough of it. Everybody's got great gear. Everybody shoots cool stuff. And let's just all help elevate each other and get better at what we do and create cooler things. Hashtag create no matter what. I'll see you guys next time. Uh, don't forget to hit like, share this video around, hit subscribe plus the bell to get notified when videos like this come out. I did all the sign off stuff, right? Yeah, okay. All right, later guys, peace.